Hi everybody, Chris Petra here. Welcome. We're having um, a great time here. We're going to be practicing on some trees today. Um, I know with watercolor artists, um, we have, uh, I guess, from my approach to watercolor, um, when I first started watercolor in my first, you know, three, four, five years, I would usually kind of be painting, you know, landscape paintings or seascape paintings and, uh, you know, trying different things. And eventually I got to that point where I got kind of, uh, you know, stuck on, you know, how can I make a better looking tree or a better looking ocean or waves or um, sky. So I just kind of, after a while, I just realized it's a matter of <clears throat> uh, practicing on the specific item that I wanted to make look better. So maybe I made pretty decent mountains and a pretty decent sky, but my trees weren't looking as great. So then I just started practicing on trees and then I would pick up a book or I'd go online or on YouTube and I would start looking around for watercolor style paintings and works. And and then I would just start to practice on those that I would see, you know, uh, in books or online and so forth, YouTube videos. So that's what I want to do here. I want to actually just bring to you some simple, I'm just going to improv these um, uh, trees that I'm going to do here just to kind of show you how I approach doing some interesting uh, tree shapes and, and designs. And then uh, you can use these, uh, you know, in your paintings too as well. And, and I think this will really help to um, give you a few new uh, approaches to doing some different style trees and so forth. So here what we're looking at is um, a Winslow Homer painting. Uh, and this is one of the books I have, and um, it's really a great book. It's just like more of a um, kind of like a like an all-encompassing book on watercolor and um, Homer's in there, Sargent, um, a lot of great watercolor artists, um, you know, uh, great masters and, and so forth, and going back in history. And so here I'm going to, you know, our first one we'll do is similar to this. So, but I'm going to improv, improv this and just, you, I'll show you how I would do something like this. The, this is very fun, very loose, this style of a tree. These are like um, evergreen trees. Pine tree type uh, look. All right, so we'll okay. I'll get my book set up across from me. I just set it up across the way, in front of my table. And the first thing I would do is just real simply, I would just um, uh, sketch out the basic shape. So the basic shape would be, you know, it's pretty much a, the, uh, the tree is pretty much straight. And then there's a couple, so we'll just make some, I'll make this a little darker. So maybe we can see a little better the pencil lines. And then what I'll do is I'll just, I'm making parallel lines off the main trunk of the tree, like so. And then toward the top, there's a few um, more angular branches. So I'll, I'll do that. And I think that's all we really need to, to really get a nice effect for this style here. And then maybe we'll just put a little bit of ground, some bushes and maybe some shrubs at the ground area just to make this look interesting as we do this exercise. And we'll think of this as an exercise. And I also put tape around this too. And uh, I encourage everybody, if you're doing even small exercises, put some tape around your watercolor paper uh, as you do your exercise. And this way, when you peel it off, it kind of has a finished look to it. And this way, when you look back at some of your practice uh, compositions, you know, it looks more pleasing. It just has a more pleasant feeling when you look at it and you feel more good about. Sometimes if we just do little exercises on paper, and it's not framed out like this, it doesn't look as good. And it's maybe, you know, we won't have a, we want to have a good feeling when we go back and look at our practice work that we do in our sketchbooks and in our small compositions like this. So we have down our rough sketch of the um, evergreen pine tree style, something we see in the, um, maybe in the low lying areas, the uh, marshes and flatlands. Where I'm from in New Jersey, there's many, many pine trees and evergreens, and they're very uh, prevalent in like 
the marshy areas and the uh, areas near the, the coastline. All right, I'm going to take a, a simple um, brush here. I'm just going to use a round brush, clean water, round brush, and then we'll mix some uh, greens, sap green. Put a, we'll put a little bit of um, burnt umber, maybe a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. French ultramarine blue. So we'll just kind of make a nice little mixture of things. And then maybe a touch of Payne's Gray. And then we're gonna, now that the key right here is once I mix this up like this, this is real vital. We grab a tissue and we dry off our brush a little bit because we don't want to go with too much on a tree like this, we want to keep it a little more sparse. So let's do that. Let's dry off the brush a little bit. And let's do a point. Point there and then... And then we just take our brush and we kind of just, you know... Carefree strokes, you know, just a little bit of a... And then some of the branches go out to the right. So you can see I'm not really getting too fancy. I'm just trying to do nice brush strokes in, in, the, in the same shape of, of the pencil lines. So we have the... Like that. So I'm trying to follow my pencil lines here. And then I can add a few more in. So these first pencil lines were just rough layout of the of the tree. And then as we go, I reference back to my photo that we saw in the beginning. You can maybe uh, eventually you can go back and take a look at that, or you can take a picture, a screen capture of that, or um, you can take a photo of that off the uh, screen. Okay, that, that's looking pretty good. And a little more blue toward the base here. The base will have a little more leaves and branches. And I just add a little more paint to keep going here. And I noticed that the, I'll just mix up again, a little more, sap green, yellow ochre, pines gray. And then just to fill it in a little more. And then at the top it's more just like that. So that's a simple evergreen. A little splashing here and then we'll do some, uh, we'll take the same mixture and then just add some blue and some purple. And we'll just make a little bit of uh, distant hills maybe. And that just ties the tree down to the to the composition. So again, we're we're doing two things at one time. We're practicing up on our trees here, as well as making it somewhat of a, a finished look. And then if we want, we can go with a little cadmium lemon yellow with this mixture. And let me add that too here. 
and again I'm trying to zest up this composition like that. Cadmium orange, just let's do a little spicing up things here. You know, we don't want to, if we're going to do a composition like this, good time to practice our uh, grass and foreground like this. And then maybe just a little bit of cerulean blue for the sky. And what that does, and we'll mix in a little bit of this too, repeating colors, very important. Repeat your colors throughout your painting. You hear me say that all the time. On and on, I keep saying the same things over and over. Pine's gray. And a little bit of cadmium orange at the uh, horizon line, distant mountain, mountains area. perfect that's our first tree simple effective and um, we'll peel the tape off and in this way we can kind of see that it it does add a lot of interest to have it framed out with our tape and we'll start another tree next and there we go And then I'll just, I'll zoom in just a little bit here. Okay, now let's, we'll start our next uh, painting. This was the Arches Rough Paper, and this is a really good paper. So I would suggest the Arches Rough Paper um, or um, also a Fabriano um, rough paper also works great for, for this type of effect with, with the trees like this. And then we have uh, same thing, we use some more Arches rough paper. I'm going to tape it, tape things down here. I always tape down my paper so it doesn't move around. And then we'll and we'll do the same thing. We'll just uh, tape tape around, and make a a nice border around the painting and. Perfect. Okay, the next painting, I'm for, for the next tree, I'm going to improv on this one. I've uh, done a lot of trees. I really like landscapes, so landscape paintings. So I'm always constantly doing uh, trees. And this one here, we'll, we'll do a grouping, maybe, maybe like two or three trees. Let's uh, see here. So... The first thing is, um, let's let's make one note. Th this note is for for trees, like basic trees that you might do. It's always good to remember that you're going to want to follow. 
you know, whether your trunk is straight or whether, you know, you have a trunk of a tree like that that's a little bit, you know, uh, on an angle. Try to remember that usually the branches are going to go at a 45 degree angle most often. So that's the general pattern in nature with trees is that the the um, branches are going to grow at a 45 degree angle. In the case that we did the pine tree just now, you know, th those are a little different. Those We have a lot of branches like this that are sort of like this. But at the top they go on the 45 degree angle for the branches. But these two, the, but you know, for most trees you're always going to see that close to 45 degree angles on the on the branches like that so that's all we really want to remember and once we have that idea down the lines can be a little more wavy of course branches and things they grow wavy they don't really always look in, in, a, in a straight stick pattern like that but um, so it's probably better that they have a little bit of um, you know, curves to them, and and then sometimes they are straight, like that. And it's also, when we're doing trees and we're doing the trunks and the branches, you know, it is kind of a quick process. Um, you can do them slower, too. Or you can lift your hand off the paper and with your brush or your pencil and do them more loosely. That tends to work really good too. But that's kind of like, that's really the the only thing I think that really for trees gives everyone, including myself, an issue sometimes is like forgetting that 45 degree angle pattern. So a 90 degree is like so, a right angle, and then the 45 is like that. So, so if we have um, like a, a square, and then um, the 45 is halfway between the uh, 90, 90 degrees. All right, let's continue on. So uh, let's, I'm gonna do this one here. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna Pretend this is a beautiful uh, mountain scene, maybe more of a wintry scene. So these trees will be more winter trees, maybe not as many leaves. And uh, we'll do the uh, 45s, 45 degree angles for the branches. So the ones at the top sometimes are a little more, less than uh, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, 20 degrees. from the uh, plumb line and a um, couple branches sometimes go the other way like that and then we'll have another maybe tree over here and again I'll do the main trunk like that and then from the main trunk area we can branch out and once in a while a branch going the opposite direction downwards maybe that looks good sometimes too This one will be a little thicker. I always mention this. This is always good to kind of remember. Um, keeping an, uh, an eye on the thickness of the trunks. So at the base of the trees, the trunks are thicker. And we, we attach them to the ground with a little bit of roots like that. So we always want to do that. Put some roots there, maybe some shadowing. We'll do some light coming from the uh, right up here. So we'll make our light insignia as we always do we'll pretend the lights coming from here across the scene and uh, and again we're keeping an eye on the the trunks now the trunks get wider and larger as they get closer so these trees are more in the distance this tree's closer to us so we'll keep this one a little bit larger the trunks a little larger and it's a little taller because again it's closer to us and then as the the trees get uh, more distant they get smaller that's all like that and then maybe we'll have a distant hill 
and maybe some um, some distant uh, bushes and trees over here. Just like that for a little interest to the uh, composition we're doing. And then we're going to go in and we'll get even in a smaller brush here. I think that was an 8 I started off with on the other painting. This one's a 6. So the first one, the brush I used was, was an 8. Da Vinci uh, travel brush. Kalinsky Sable uh, watercolor brush. And this is a number 6. Same thing, travel brush by Da Vinci. They're really nice. You can unscrew them and then put them into the And this way you can throw them into your pocket or into your um, bag. And then when you get to the location to paint, you just unscrew it. Screw it back this way, and then you have your brush with handle. All right, so now let's start out. We're going to do some... Uh, let's make sure we, we're going to start a new painting. Let's wet a paper towel and just tidy up our palette a little bit. So I'm going to clean off the uh, paint that we used in the first composition. And then we'll mix up some tree trunk colors. Um, burnt, sienna, uh, raw, uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, maybe a little yellow ochre. A little bit of cerulean blue. And then we'll just, I have my hand on the, on the paper, resting on the paper. And then I'm just going to go slowly. This is the base here. Maybe to get a little variation, I'll dry my brush off a little bit. And then do a little bit of a dry brushy feel like that. And then go back in, maybe lighten it up more with some yellow ochre. Then maybe back in with some burnt umber, some French ultramarine blue to get a darker look for the uh, trunks of the trees. So I can add some of that darker feel. And then we can just start working in our branches. Maybe some of the thicker branches I'm gonna do with this brush. This has a good, good point left on it still. We can use uh, a needlepoint brush to get some of the finer lines, we'll do that. But since we have our brush all loaded up with paint and it's, let's just keep going. We'll, we'll work on all of these. The only thing I have to worry about is not resting my hand in this paint here on this main larger tree. So the situation is I should have really started with the smaller trees and worked right to left across the page this way. Because there is a, I do this sometimes. I used to do it very often where I would forget and rest my hand into the paint, the fresh paint here. So. It's better to start on your left if you're right-handed and work to the right. Or the same thing if you're left-handed, you start on your right side and work the opposite way. And we're just going to have a happy time here. And no big deal if you see a little spot there. That could be where the happy little squirrels are living in their nest there. It's winter time. They're, they want to get warm and have a nest there. and keep warm on the really cold winter days and we're just going along here at a nice pace again I'm having fun and just free carefree brush strokes and that's looking very good notice I didn't I, I skipped some I skipped here and there I don't want to make it all one solid line Then we'll go in with our uh, needlepoint brush and we'll make some. We'll make some more dark burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, and a little bit of yellow ochre. I'll dry off a little bit, and then we can get, do these more f finer. Final lines, and this is just more with 
we get much better uh, thin branches with this uh, needlepoint brush. And Now the hard work's done. That is more challenge, you know, that's the more difficult part when we do the um, branches. That's more time consuming and then when we work on the uh, the leaves, now this is winter a winter scene, so we're not gonna have as much, um, some raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber. A little bit of, um, Cerulean blue. Now here we're going to do the same thing. A little bit of green, sap green. We're going to dry off the brush with our tissue a little bit. Take off some of that paint so the brush gets a little drier. And then we're just going to do some really light brush strokes. And we have that paper helping us. The That paper is key. The arch is rough paper. It's a rough paper, so you can see how you get that leafy effect just by lightly scraping the paper like that. And you make circular patterns like the... Then you can add in a little more, um, maybe some olive green over here. Mix in some of that with some olive green. And that's really it. It's a fall scene here. This is like the fall, like, you know, close to winter time. Most of the uh, leaves have uh, fallen off the tree. These tree grouping of trees here. So again, we're drying off our brush a little. And that's all you need. And that's perfect right there. Then we go in, same colors, mix up. I'm adding a little bit of um, purple and French ultramarine blue for more of these distant colors here. And then purple mixed in with a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. And we'll get a little bit of shadowing. Like that. And I'll muddy up that purple a little bit just to change up the variety there. These might be some some slope. A 
Okay. We're uh, working along here. I'm going to take a little bit of paint. Sometimes if I want to remove a little bit of paint, I'll uh, fold fold the paper towel like that into a fine fine point like that, fine edge, and then I can do a little and that works a little bit because I think the water kind of went across the trunk of the tree there and kind of was blotting that, kind of causing a little bit of an issue. So I added, I just blotted up a little bit of paint there. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. We use some of our purple and cerulean blue again to finish up the sky colors here. And as we did the sky colors last, we just made sure to blot up the, um, the extra water that might have infiltrated the area where the leaves are with some paper, t uh, some tissue, to, just so it doesn't reactivate the paint where the leaves are. And so that's some, some really enjoyable winter trees. A nice uh, snow field, a snowy field, and some uh, distant bushes and trees, and then these nice grouping of uh, trees that have some uh, fall colors on them. And we'll zoom in a little. Okay, let's do one more. Let's try something a little different. Um, let's see what I can... Again, I'm improving a little bit. I just, I've done so many different style trees. They're all enjoyable and fun to do. Um, Sometimes I'll, le uh, I'll leaf through a couple books just to get some ideas as well. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think I, I'll use arches again. I definitely noticed that with arches paper or any kind of rough paper, you definitely get much more uh, better looking trees in your paintings. If you're used to working on smooth paper, maybe we'll do a video on that <clears throat> with trying to do different techniques with trees with, with smooth paper, satin paper. I like doing, I like working on satin paper too. And uh, let's try to, okay. down some tape here. Okay, we put an interesting border around this with tape. And now maybe we'll do more of a um, summery type tree. And Again, we'll sketch it out to start with, just a basic idea. So let's pretend maybe we're, we're near a lake or like a river. It's summertime. And we're getting into the mindset. It's summertime. It's warm out. We're by a pond or a lake. 
or getting into the idea of a, a big tree next to the And then all I'm doing is just outlining a nice, you know, roundish shape. With, with a pencil here. And then, maybe it's going to be a grouping of uh, two or three trees here. I just get some information on my paper, and I think that's fine. All I needed was a little bit of information on here, the overall outline of the tree, and then um, some rough sketching of just the, the trunks at the bottom, and then maybe some of the out, outlines of the bushes underneath the trees over here, and that's really it. And then here's the, uh, maybe there's a lake or a pond here, so maybe we'll just put a reflection in there of the tree. And that, that should be fine. With this, um, we'll go back to the number eight brush. Round, uh, this is a Da Vinci travel brush again. Uh, watercolor, it's a Kalinske uh, hair brush. And also, I wanted to mention, uh, if you're uh, new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please, uh, please uh, you know, consider subscribing. We come out with new videos every week. And um, we do videos just like this where we're doing exercises on and small compositions on just everyday watercolor type um, subject matter. So uh, if you're following me over a year's time, you'll probably wind up painting a little bit of everything because um, that's what I try to do on my channel is just cover a little bit of everything with the watercolor medium, different styles, different um, subject matter. Um, so, um, you know, please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, also, too, thumbs up uh, at the end of the video if you like this uh, video and you want to see more videos like this. And let's get right into it. Now, this one is a more free, carefree, and loose style. Uh, of tree. Our first two trees were a little more um, careful style, a little slower. This one will go a little quicker. This will be a little looser. And then here we're going to, this is going to be summertime, so nice bright colors. Let's add some bright greens with mixed with. Um, Sap green and cadmium lemon yellow. And then maybe over to the right here, we're going to make the darker sap green with a little burnt umber and uh, some and also maybe some uh, viridian green. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue for a cooler kind of feel. That looks pretty good. All right, now we clean our brush off. And I always keep a tissue handy to dry off the brush if I need to a little bit. And uh, we'll go in with the lighter colors first. Maybe a little bit of uh, yellow ochre there too. So we'll do this lighter color here first. Up top, the lighter color. Again, let's always help ourselves. We'll put our light insignia. Light's coming from this direction. So the darker colors are going to be on the left side because they're in shadow. So we'll put some mineral violet and cobalt blue for our shadow color over here. I'm going to do a little splashing, a little bit of finger painting here. Sap green. This works good, wet on wet. You get some of the start of your colors on there and then you can go in with some darker tonal values. 
under the shadowy side here. And I just changed the way my brush strokes are. And a little bit of splashing. And a little bit of straight cadmium lemon yellow up here. And then cobalt blue and purple underneath here for the shadow. So the light is hitting the top of the trees over here, this grouping of trees. Brighter colors, more high intensity colors, the yellow and green mixture. Then we add some purple and blue underneath for the shadow side of the tree over here. And then we'll bring our colors down and just, we can make this a lighter feel. We're gonna make things lighter under, so now let's change, let's make it really light underneath this tree here for now. I'll explain why in a few minutes. So we're going with very light, very little paint and water under here for right now. Okay. Just a couple blots with the tissue. And I just Some reflections in the pond. They're gonna look good darker. Purple and cobalt blue. And then the feeling of water, so I'm just going to just add a little bit of that to the painting. This is just a composition. Have fun with it. We're just practicing some ideas here. I'm kind of practicing as I go. Okay. Now I'm going to do, this is a perfect time for a break. Um, but right now, we'll instead of taking a break, let's uh, use the blow dryer. And we'll just dry this off a little bit. a smaller brush and we're going to use some burnt umber, burnt sienna and a little bit of uh, cerulean blue and we'll, we'll do a little bit of uh... so here we're just doing the uh, some of the trunks underneath here that's the reason why I went lighter underneath the tree here, so we can see these a little better, the, uh, the trunks of the trees here underneath. And that looks pretty good. Um, a looser style tree, maybe we'll use our needlepoint brush and we'll get a little more um, detail. Burnt umber and French ultramarine blue. I 
can always um, tap our, our brush, our needlepoint brush, on some paper towel or some tissue. And this way it And then what we do here is we we want to do this too. We want to kind of get some feel of some branches up here. I dry this off a little. So we would see them in these little areas where there's a little bit of uh, gaps in the in the in the leaves. And that's all. Just a little suggestion of some... If you do a few too many of the branches, no big deal. Take a little bit of water and just uh, blend that in a little bit and it'll soften them up a little. Like that. And uh, we can also since this is an exercise, this is when we practice our fun and having a good time. Let's do some. Let's do some. Uh, some weeds by the side of the, the nice pond or lake here, and we'll do some more. Uh, we'll do some water. Let's do some French ultramarine blue. We'll add that in the water, so we do some French ultramarine blue in the sky, and then we add it right down into the water. Then maybe a little uh, raw sienna. Mixed in with the French ultramarine blue. Cadmium orange. French ultramarine blue. And got a little dull looking here so that's when you we spruce it up a little bit with some uh, cadmium lemon yellow and a little bit of purple maybe too for shadow color purple and cobalt blue And I just made a dark, uh, darker uh, line across here where the um, the water and the land meet. Perfect. Okay. Let's uh, maybe we'll dry this a little.
practice went well here. We did a nice summery tree here. It looks great. Fluffy tree, lots of leaves and branches, and we're by the nice lake or pond. You can make up in your own mind the scene. And again, I hope you'll uh, thumbs up if you like this video, and uh, sub I, I'm hoping you'll subscribe too. We make great videos like this every week. And uh, we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit here. And that's the finished look of a summery tree next to a lake or a pond. Loose, very loose, just some cooler colors on the shadow side under here. Brighter high intensity colors up on the right. And a nice lake with some feeling of uh, water underneath. And uh, we'll see you on the next video everyone. Bye bye, have a great day, evening and morning, and happy painting.